yeah okay all right so um i will give a brief overview um, of the new trends project and especially on the current developments and what we have uh, done so far in the last month so it's a bit since we have a mixed uh, uh, mixed group here some know the project already and others don't at all i will also talk very briefly about the objective and what we are aiming to do in the project and then um, go a bit more detailed into what we have done so far in the workshop process and what we have as the first outcomes. So the, the new trends project, as the name already says, is um, on studying new societal trends mostly. So arising from mega trends such as digitalization, um, uh, changing demographics, um, of course, climate change playing in. So really, what are the mega trends and how could they potentially impact our future energy demand? So there, there are um, different ways in which they could impact energy demand, of course, decreasing and increasing effects, but also cross-sectoral demand shifts, for example. And uh, what we want to study is uh, going a bit away from expecting continuous or linear trends or only studying continuous or linear trends and to, to look a bit ahead of what kind of disruptive or non-linear trends could shift our energy demand or could impact our energy demand um, in the future, um, particularly until 2050. So already in the proposal, we have set out four uh, four main trends that we want to study um, and that we go into detail. So that's cons the, the shift from consumers to prosumers, um, circular economy and low carbon industry, the digitalization of economy and also of private lives and the sharing economy. That's um, the trends we, we set out with, but we want in our first task, as you will see in a moment, we aimed in um, widening this, uh, the scope of the trends, but those are definitely four of the trends that we expected already from previous work to be quite uh, crucial when studying future energy demand. So the overall project um, aim is to develop a 2050 energy efficiency vision which takes into account these new societal trends. And the understanding that lies behind this is that when we, when we talk about future energy demand, um, to have a look at these trends that we already see starting to unfold in different stages, um, some, some already quite clear like digitalization or predictable like demographic change and other trends not so clear yet. We expect that, or we understand that it's crucial to study these, these trends and their potential impact on future energy demand to, to get a, yeah, a planning side, right? To design our, our future energy system and not being only reactive to the trends that unfold and then having to find the right policies in a rather short time. So uh, the aim is to increase the understanding of how these new societal trends can impact future energy demand to improve the modeling, we are in, an, um, in a call that's uh, working on enhanced energy demand models, of course. So improve the modeling is a major part of the project and then exploring the future impact, impacts. So we have here an iterative multi-method approach that we choose and what, what we are working with. And this is what is one of the crucial next steps to define the pathways and the scenarios. But the initial idea we are going into or we were going into in the project is to have four different scenarios. And this is here, these are exemplary results from a previous project where we had a similar approach. We have one reference scenario. You can see it as the black line. Um, we have a removing barriers to energy efficiency scenario, which is the blue line, so we would if we remove all energy efficiency barriers, already decrease um, energy demand quite substantially. And then based from this, we think there, there are two variants either. Um, we can have, um, we can, we can have uh, this energy efficiency potentials realized, but we have um, new trends that countervail this impacts, this positive impacts, for example, um, unfolding digitalization uh, in terms of automated driving or so that are really 
that might increase energy demand, then we would end up with this yellow line. So while we realize all efficiency potentials, um, we, we might not be able to decrease energy demand um, as, as we could. So uh, transport is a, a prime example here. And the green line, so that's that's below the red. You can see here that's the new trans efficiency scenario. So really the vision. Okay, if if all barriers are removed and the trends unfold in a positive way, where could we end up with, with our future energy demand? We also will do a worst case scenario, which is really okay, potentials are not realized and trends are unfolding in a in a un um, yeah, in an unfavorable way, which could then potentially really increase energy demand. So the bottom line here is that we expect trends to unfold, but that it's really not to, to assess basically the, the range in which we could end up with energy demand increase or decrease. And that also areas like digitalization are not by itself um, determined to decrease energy demand, but there, there is a lot yeah, a lot behind the scene that actually could um, could shape this. So we have a multi-method approach here. We have four steps in which we are currently working. We had a first um, and three of them done already. So we have a first step on trend identification. We had a deep dive analysis of different trends, their relevance, implications, indicators, and uncertainty. And then the trend clustering process, I will come to all of that in a moment. And the next step now is to translate these to our models. So where we're currently at is that we have developed narratives for a lot of these trends to which I will come. And now we want to integrate them in the models. Mm. We have here um, a, then an overall approach in the project where we have um, where we do one scenario run quite soon. So with the current energy demand models that we have in the project, we will implement the new trends to the extent possible. So for example, urbanization, what could we already include in terms of parameters into our energy demand models um, to account for these trends? Also um, to reflect then in the gap analysis, what can we already include? but maybe also what is already included, to which extent do we already include assumptions on urbanization, on demographics, or also on behavioral changes. So we will have a gap analysis, what can and what can't our current models do. And then the core of the project is um, the model adaptation in three so-called focus studies, the ones I introduced at the beginning. So prosumaging, circular economy and digitalization in the tertiary sector and the sharing economy in the tertiary and the transport sector. And there we will really go into the logic of the models and enhance the modeling logic to expand the models to account, to be able to model these trends in the future. And at the very end of the project, we will then have a second scenario run with the enhanced energy demand models. Um, that th we can then see to which extent are we better able to capture certain trends. Maybe uh, to mention that here, the gap analysis we are doing here as um, compared to what Neef said. So this is the gap analysis of the models, not what Neef said, the gap analysis or the gap between a potential of energy efficiency measures and their act actually realize realization. Here we're talking about the gap in the models, what can and what can't we model currently. So where do we stand now? We had three workshops um, that all dealt with the modeling, uh, with the trends, sorry, uh, with identifying the trend clusters in the first internal workshop. Uh, we identified trends starting from trends on society and lifestyle, business and industry and politics and governance. And we identified interlinkages between these clusters. Uh, then based on these clusters, we had an external workshop, which, um, which studied then, yeah, which relevance do they have? How impactful could these trends be? And also how disruptive could they be for the future energy system? And uh, together with the external expert, we prioritized uh, the clusters in terms of their importance and now for enhancing the models. 
And in the last internal workshop, again, we have finalized the clusters, merging and adding clusters, and we have done a final prioritization of the clusters. So how did that look like in practice? We started here in the first workshop, as you can see, with a lot of trends. Um, all, each each post-it is describing one of the trends or titling one of the trends that we have identified from the literature from previous foresight studies. So you can see that we started out with a lot of trends and we have then clustered them into um, into these main areas. So basically asking the participants to put the trends together that belong together and then giving them titles. So we ended up here with these 20 trend clusters as a result from the first workshop and also the interlinkages between these trends. So um, since all of the groups started out with different uh, with different um, with different trends, uh, some of them were very closely, some of the trend clusters were very closely interlinked and others barely. So we tried to capture this interlinkage between the clusters here. And um, in the second workshop, we started then out with these uh, clusters. So for example, one was decentralized work. Remote working um, currently is a huge topic, of course, and the question how our how our work will also shift, the way we work will shift in the long term due to what we have now experienced through COVID. So one cluster was decentralized work, of course, very closely interlinked with the question of digitalization and what can we do in remote working. And we then asked the, the experts to, to scale to at one side, okay, at which, at which scale, at which level will this trend have impact? Um, and then, or the underlying trends of this cluster will unfold the impact and how high do you expect the impact to be? And um, then we, we made sure we capture also the discussion around that because our aim was to develop narratives based on this discussion. And also on the right side, you can see we had then the chance to think a bit further if we expect this trend to be disrupt disruptive or rather a linear trend. So linear trends um, are quite, um, yeah, quite established in the modeling already, but what happens with the disruptive trends where change might happen very fast. So we also analyzed that for each of the trend clusters. We then also asked the experts to prioritize between the trend clusters, which are the important ones, as you can see here. And not so surprisingly, digitalization was on, on place one. Um, but also other areas like sustainable cities or climate change and behavior had quite high scores. Um, this was not yet a final selection, but we took this prioritization from the experts also into the further workshop. So what happened in the last workshop, we had here the session as said internally based on what you saw previously and the aim was here to categorize uh, in terms of the trends, what do we really want to look at within the project. And we ended up with seven universal clusters. So universal in that case means that um, for each of the models involved and each of the sectors, we will discuss how this trend will impact the cluster. Uh, sorry, how this trend will impact the sector. And um, if we are not, it doesn't mean that we have to, or we are not aiming to include all of these, all of these trend clusters into the modeling. There might be quite substantial logic shifts needed or enhancements to the modeling, but at least we want to discuss um, in the gap analysis, what can we already model and what can't we model? And there will also already now, it looks like, be very promising um, topics for the future that come out of this. Like, okay, maybe we cannot model certain things now, but this could be interesting for future work. So for the universal ones, we will have a discussion on each of them for each sector. Then we have the categorization of nice to have, that's what we label them now. Those are trend clusters that should be considered for the sectors where they seem to be relevant but not all of this might be relevant for all of the sectors. So basically um, the modelers will have a closer look at these trend clusters to see um, to which extent they're relevant in their modeling um, exercise or for their sector in general. 
and discuss those as well. And then we have some that are that are optional where one could have a look at, but not necessarily um, so relevant for our modeling activities now. And we have the parking lot, which is only including evolving democratic systems. Um, since we currently have the focus on the EU, we, uh, we did not see that to be too relevant for the modeling activities here. So Yes, so in the end, we have 15 finalized clusters, in particular, the seven universal clusters that we will work with. And for each of the seven or for each of the 15, we have now developed narratives. So uh, these narratives just here exemplified these narratives include um, the thoughts on why and in which case might this trend cluster increase energy demand, in which case might this trend cluster decrease energy demand, what things are, of course, there might be countervailing factors uh, of increasing and decreasing demand at the same time. And then a relevant question, of course, is also how can policies shape to, yeah, how can policies help to shape or to steer this in the right direction? As said, for some of the areas, there might be, um, they might be evolving quite uh, yeah, naturally quite uh, in the right direction. Some might need some push to be faster uh, and others might really already need the, the steering into even decreasing energy demand as for example, in the transport sector. So we have developed the narratives for these 15 trend clusters. And the next step we are now um, to do is to formulate scenarios based on these trend clusters and their development, which will go in the direction of the four scenarios that I have introduced at the beginning. Okay, so that is exemplarily we have here for circular economy, the question, which case would it increase energy demand? Um, particular that might be the case in the short term when systems have to be rearranged and newly designed. But uh, in the long term, we would expect a decreasing energy demand through circular economy quite substantially. Um, and the, the impact will be on the macro scale. So we have really in form of a narrative, in form of a section of text that describes exactly these different um, directions. Okay, so I think we have this for for all those trends, but I will not go further into detail. We could, if it's interesting in the discussion. And um, the planned output of this is we have currently in preparation, the deliverable that will also be public, which uh, describes exactly the process that I have now described to you. We have also planned a working paper um, as a deliverable and will present the work at the ECEEE. And we have already published an article on the process that is just out right now. Okay, I think that's it from my side. Are there any questions, comments? I'm trying to see the chat at the same time. Somehow I can't. Okay, the question of what I mean by evolving democratic systems. So um, maybe to go a step back on the on the foresight process or or where we have come from when we looked at these very many trend or, or the trends, not the trend clusters here. This is from extensive foresight studies that not only look at the European level but also on the global level. And one area was really the development of um, of democratic systems in terms of um, yeah, starting or finding regulatory institutions um, that can that can or that that start developing ideas on uh, energy demand, energy ministries, and so on. So it's really on on the code evolvement of democratic systems especially in the global south. But also we could see about that when we go to, to more Eastern countries, uh, it could also be a factor. So we were discussing on that. Um, okay, so the question here was whether it's it has to go with energy communities. Yes, I mean, when we think about um, democratic 
so here it was really more on really evolving these institutions and um, and uh, yeah, evolving these institutions, but not as a democratic participation per se in already existing democratic systems. But of course, this could be an interesting question to study. Um, and it goes, the energy communities maybe um, goes in our, the cluster we currently have, it would be more considered under presumptuous really. I mean, energy communities, something we have discussed here extensively, which role could they also play? Presumaging wouldn't mean necessarily that you have to presume your very own energy, but also that you rearrange, that you work in new ways in energy communities. Yes, so that uh, in our case, energy communities would be more in the presumaging and um, behavior change rearm so in that cluster particularly i'm not sure chris whether this answers your question otherwise you can okay understood good <laughs> nevis i'm seeing your hand uh, yes uh, just a clarification question um very interesting project and i'm looking forward to reading the paper and what comes next as well um so as far as i understood the workshops were with experts right only mm -hmm. so um, um yes yeah because I was wondering whether you might consider also in the future to have a kind of consultation of uh, what has uh, resulted from um, from the workshops, so the priorities and the cluster themselves, um, to get the citizens' voice, uh, just to see uh, whether they agree or not. Of course, they might not have the, all the technical knowledge on specific topics, but uh, as you said, energy communities, but also circular economy, sharing economy, this might be very linked also to what people think and want. And so just to, yeah, to, to make uh, the consideration of trends more um, yeah, stronger somehow. Uh, yeah, just uh, that. Thank you, Nivs. Yeah, a very important point, very interesting point. I'm, um, so in the in the process that we had here also, because it is we needed it to be quite condensed at the beginning of the project so that we can start our modeling activities and most in particular enhancing the modeling. So we needed to have a very condensed uh, way of doing this at the beginning of the project. So we have the, had the three workshops and just to clarify, so the first one was only internally with the project team. The second was then with externals, but really experts. So in particular, um, colleagues from us working in the different Horizon projects like Anna First, like the Synergies project and so on. So like Cruz was involved from the Y project. So really to have um, to have here this expert level and then the last one was again in our group. So um, there we did not involve any citizens. It's a super interesting point that you raise here. I mean, our idea was also to do it in form of dissemination, in form of, of webinars. But we had to strike um, we had to strike a balance in this project now on um, we already needed to formulate some trends and to to be based on the previous work to be able to really tell in the proposal what we want to do and what we aim in doing here. But definitely, it's a super interesting um, topic also for for communicating and disseminating with uh, with the citizens and we have some actions planned here. We do not have so many actions planned yet in terms of really engaging the citizens in the formulation of these trends. But it might be very interesting to start from this angle, maybe in, in, in yeah, either start in the webinars or start in, a, um, to keep that in mind, for different projects where we're already trying to engage more with the community. Um, and we are also involved, I mean, in the Nudge project, for example, where we have a bit more engagement with, uh, with the communities. So there are also interesting overlaps here with other projects in which we are involved. Thank you. Any other questions that I don't see somehow? I can see the Q&A now, but I don't find the chat anymore. So if there's anything posted in the chat. Okay, 
All right. Um, then I think also time wise, we are already at the time slot where we wanted to have the break uh, cruise, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and uh, sorry to interrupt yeah. you, but there is a question ah. on the chat uh, okay. from Eva, I guess, uh, under yeah. the Leira Serrano. Okay. Thank you. I'm trying. I will do you would like to post it? Uh, do you would like to ask the question or should I read it in comment? Maybe you could <laughs> allow her. Yeah, do you hear me? I don't know. Yes, I hear you. Okay, so, um, yeah, it was um, my question was related also to the um, democratization that was in the parking lot in the, as far as I remember, um, the slide. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of trends, um, in, and you were saying, yeah, we're, because we are focusing on the EU, um, we just put it in a parking lot when, when clustering. I don't know if I remember right. Maybe you can go to the slide there. Um, yeah. So the question is um, because th that could be actually uh, um, a big impact um, and within the EU, if we, that is, a, um, a, that is actually, a, a, there is a political trend um, that is um, changing um, also in terms of um, decisions on investment in the energy system that had put, well, that has actually an impact. So I wonder um, how, what, what will happen with the parking lot? <laughs> in, um, yeah. in the project? Will, will you reconsider? Will you study it? Um, so, yeah, thank you. Thanks a lot for the question. I mean, one thing why it's in the parking lot and we didn't not kick it out entirely is exactly for allowing these, these comments to come up and um, see whether there is again maybe some yeah some things we were missing or not yet considering so i have, thanks a lot for your comments and i mean what we will have to see because you also said here energy infrastructure and so on we are uh, we are modeling the energy demand side so in but of course so gas pipelines and so on might not be um, in the focus of our work but of course in terms of infrastructure in terms of decreasing energy efficiency barriers, it, it might still be relevant. So thanks a lot for your comment. We will pick that up and, and think again about maybe, yeah, maybe it was the underlying trends that are in the trend clusters that made us dismiss it for the moment, but maybe there are other trends that could be, um, that uh, are quite relevant here and we should think about it again. So thanks a lot for the comment. We will take it please to the protocol <laughs> and uh, have a look at this. Thank you. Any other comments, questions? Okay, 